In this tutorial we aim to introduce you to the concept of a series. For this we assume that you know what a sequence and the limit of a sequence are. A series is always based on a sequence. So let us suppose we have given a sequence A of real numbers. Then the first two elements of that sequence are A1, A2, A3, A4 and so on. We know that every sequence can be expressed in such a way. As an example we may take the sequence where a n equals 2 times n for n greater or equal to 1. In this case we have a1 equals 2, a2 equals 4, a3 equals 6, a4 equals 8 and so on. Now the main idea is to add the elements of our sequence in a particular way. By doing so we create what is called the partial sums of the sequence. The first partial sum, we call it as 1, is the same as the first element in our sequence a that is simply a1 or in our example the number 2. Next we define the second partial sum which we call s2 as the sum of the first two elements of our sequence that is a1 plus a2. In our example that makes 2 plus 4 or 6. Then the third partial sum called s3 is the sum of the first three elements of our sequence that is a1 plus a2 plus a3 or 2 plus 4 plus 6 which adds up to 12 in the example. By now you have surely guessed that the fourth partial sum is called S4 and is the sum of the first four elements of our sequence. In our example this adds up to 20. Now we can go on like this and sum up the first five elements of our sequence, the first six elements and so on. Obviously we don't want to write this all out. But still we somehow need to express that S1000 say is the sum of the first 1000 elements of our sequence. To do so we can use a very compact notation. In fact we can define the element as n, where n is any positive integer that you want it to be, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1000 or whatever, and we define as n as the sum of the first n elements of our sequence. That is, we add up a1, a2 and so on until we finally get to the element in our sequence with the index n. Using sigma notation we can write this long sum in a very compact form, like this. This notation just means that we take the sum of all a k, that is the elements of our sequence, where k runs from 1 to n. In our example a k is replaced by 2 times k. So we have created an infinite list of partial sums, starting with s1, followed by s2, s3 and so on until we reach say s1000 and after that we keep going still. That means the partial sums form a sequence of their own. And this sequence is called a series. So we can say that a series is the sequence of partial sums for a given sequence A. Back in our example we started with the initial sequence 2, 4, 6, 8 and so on and created a series 2, 6, 12, 20 and so on. And that works every time. For any given sequence we can look at its series, that is, the sequence of its partial sums. But there is still a bit more to say. Since a series is a sequence, we can ask what about its limit. That is a valid question you can ask for any sequence, in particular the sequence of partial sums. Remember that Sn is the sum of the first n elements of our initial sequence A. Now if we ask about the limit of the series, we really ask what happens with Sn if n goes to infinity. In other words, we let n get bigger and bigger, which means we add up more and more elements of our initial sequence. So the limit of the series can be interpreted as the sum of all elements of the initial sequence. This idea of adding up all elements of the initial sequence can be expressed very nicely using sigma notation. Because this notation simply means that we sum over all a k, where k runs from 1 to infinity. This creates some sort of an infinite sum, which we call the infinite series. However, it is very important to understand that we are not really adding up all elements of the initial sequence, since this is simply not possible. But what we do is, we look what happens eventually as we add up more and more elements of the sequence. In this sense, the infinite series is not a sum, but a limit, that is, the limit of the partial sums. So let us summarize. For any given sequence A, we can look at its series, which is the sequence of partial sums. Now for this series we can inquire about the limit, also known as the infinite series. 
Finally, there are three possible outcomes for this limit. Firstly, the limit is some real number L, in which case we say the series converges to L. Secondly, the limit is plus or minus infinity, in which case we say the series converges to plus or minus infinity respectively. And thirdly, the limit does not exist at all, in which case we say the series diverges. Which of the three cases occur for a given sequence is usually the question we have to answer when we deal with a series. So what happens in our example? Here we had the sequence a n equals 2 times n. It is easy to see that the sum of the first n elements increases beyond any bound as n gets bigger. Hence we conclude that this series converges to plus infinity.